All right, so I get lots of questions about our root cellar. You know, how do we put up this much food in the root cellar? What's the root cellar like? Well, this is it. We do not have a root cellar. All my stuff goes in this small building behind us. This is our pump house. It holds the pump for our well. So I put all my jars of food in here. I know it's not gonna freeze, but we're getting ready to head to Florida and I was gonna go in and grab a few items to make up a Christmas present. And I thought I would give you a peek of what all I have done this year and just what our year's worth the food supply looks like. All right, so I'm just gonna walk you around this little area here. This first section here is tinctures, um, infused liquors that I have. We have different teas that I've made this year, peppermint, um, elderflower tea. We do still have a, a little bit of Labrador tea that Clay brought back from the show. Different salts that I have made. And then of course we have um, the elderberries, um, making a tincture out of those. And I always keep this kind of stuff going. I mean, there's multiple jars here. We have some elderflower infused vodka that I'm trying this year. I get the comment, you must drink a lot because we have so much stuff, but we don't. All this stuff here is the stuff that I made when Clay was on the show. The, the Kahluas, the schnapps, all of it's still there. We have a ton left. I like to make these things, but we don't drink a ton of it. Down here, I got a freeze dryer this year. So we have different freeze dried vegetables. We have okra, watermelon, some strawberries. Um, we always dehydrate a bunch of stuff. So we have plums from our tree that are dehydrated. And then we have a lot, lots and lots of cherry tomatoes that are dehydrated. These are really, really good to put on salad or just to eat. Then some herbs that I put up this year. Um, we have some cilantro chives. Um, I always keep my tomato peels when I can tomatoes because you can grind these up into a powder and use them in soups and stews. Then we have some wheat berries here that I grind up to make bread. This stuff back here is just a bunch of store-bought stuff we have. We're slowly just using it up and replacing it with homegrown things. Some things we're not ever going to replace. I mean, olives. I'm not ever going to grow olives here, so olives coconut oil, stuff like that. We're always going to buy, but I do buy those things in bulk. I mean, back here we have different, I mean, big things of honeys. I do hope to do our own honey one day um, in this amount, but it did not happen this year. So honeys, coconut oils, there's different, there's olive oil, stuff like that. I'm always gonna buy from the store, but all this kind of stuff is just slowly fading out. And another thing, I know someone's gonna say this, about our massive amounts of peanut butter. Peanut butter is one of the things that you will never, ever find me out of. It's the one thing that I won't give up. We all like peanut butter, so we buy peanut butter in bulk. There we got an Adam sponsorship. <laughs> then we're headed over to this side, which is all of my hard work for this year. Um, I'm just gonna kind of stir on the bottom and just work my way up back here. And this is very small, kind of hard to move around in here. But um, all this back here is extra broth that I did this year. I put up a lot of it. There's more, well, you'll see it when I work my way around. But broths, barbecue sauces, we have roasted um, poblanos. We work our way up. We have uh, canned squash. Canned squash is really gross if you just open it up and eat it out of the can because it's really mushy but it works excellent if you make squash casserole because it's already cooked. You just dump it in your pan and it's very quick to make squash, squash casserole. I did canned potatoes this year. Then we have squash soups, corn. Um, we did lots of pickled eggs. We like pickled eggs. My kids will eat a jar at a time. So lots of pickled eggs. Then we have banana, pickled banana peppers cowboy candy. I do have a video out on how to do that. I'll link that so you can see it. And then I keep the extra cowboy candy juice because this is really good to put on into stews or like if you're making a roast or smoked pork, you can baste it with this and it's really good. Up here is all of our jams. We did a lot of jam this year because it was so slow getting started with the garden this year. So we spent a bunch of time making things like the dandelion syrup and the dandelion um, jellies. It's really good. It tastes like honey. But so lots and lots of syrup. We will not eat all the syrup and jelly within 
two years, probably three years. It's just, we have it, so next year I don't have to worry about it. Then we have down here, we have all the elderberries. It was like bumper crop for elderberries this year. So this is um, just juice. This has no sugar added to it. I just, um, just done the juice and when we get ready to use it, I can open it up and put some honey in it and then we'll use it that way. I did do some elderberry syrup that is sweetened so my kids can have for pancakes. Um, elderberry is really good for if, you, if you're sick or if you're wanting to prevent sickness. It's really high in vitamin C and you can take just a little bit a day to help kind of boost your immunity so you don't get sick or if you get a cold or flu, you just kind of bump up that and take it, you know, a couple tablespoons multiple times a day and it helps you get over your cold or flu quicker and make sure symptoms less severe you can buy it in the store and it is very very expensive I mean for just a little bottle you're looking at like 20 bucks and it does not last long so then we have the peaches here Finn and I went this summer and got a ton of peaches and pears from one of our local orchards here we don't usually do it but they had a free you pick pears they just wanted people to get them off the uh, trees for them we ended up picking like 200 pounds of pears crazy but we have um lots i mean cinnamon pears canned pears we have pear sauce so many pears um but so yeah so we have canned peaches this year and pears and then um back here behind the door is pear sauce green beans we eat a lot of green beans. This is one thing that did not do really good here this year. Um, most of this stuff is from the prior year. So this is one thing that I will have to plant a lot of next year because I did not resupply what we normally eat. This will not last us very long at all. Tomatoes is another thing that did not do good here this year. Um, most times I have 80 quarts of um, tomatoes on hand. I think this year I put up 25 quarts, not near as much as I should have. This is more broth. So we have deer broth, there's turkey broth. So down here is all of the winter squashes. These will be fine when we go to Florida. These last a really long time. Working our way up where I stopped at, tomatoes didn't do good. Um, I did get some tomatoes late. I think I picked all my tomatoes green off the bush in October and I made pasta sauce like the week before Christmas. That's when they find all the tomatoes finally got red. I did put burger and some of deer burger, deer, maybe it was elk. No, it was deer, deer burger. And then some of our homemade sauce, sausage from the pork, from the pigs that we raised this year. That's in there. And then this down here, this is the canned meat that I have no room on the shelf for. We have canned elk here. And then in the back, back here, we have canned pork. We um, butchered a couple of our smaller pigs and put them in cans. It's really good. We did canned pineapple. I got pineapples on sale. I mean, they were a steal. So I grabbed, I think I grabbed like 14 pineapples and we ended up with um, 35 or 40 quarts of pineapple. Canned pineapple is really good. Unless you buy store-bought canned pineapple, then it sucks. And then we have, I do flavored olive oils. This is just herbs in here in the olive oil. They stay good as long as your herbs stay below the olive oil. This one is garlic, um, oregano, and then we have um, garlic rosemary. We really like these and I always keep these on hands on hand, but it is important to know that you have to keep your herbs below the olive oil because if they're sticking out of the olive oil, then they're going to mold and your batch is going to go bad. Up here, the section here, maybe those won't fall with me. All this is the lard. This is a good year's worth, maybe a little less than a year's worth of um, lard for us for cooking. I think there's like 20 quarts here. This is all from our pigs that we raised here. With some of those peaches that I bought, uh, bought at the orchard, we did a peach habanero hot sauce. I love peaches. I hate habanero, but the two together makes a very, very good hot sauce. I love habaneros. Which is the only reason I grew habaneros. And then we just have some salsas. This stuff was not from this year. This has actually been probably two or three years ago that I did this which is why I do so much at one time because the next year I might not get a crop. That was the case with the salsa this year. Didn't have enough tomatoes to make any. Pie fillings. 
We did pie fillings with service berry, um, peaches, pears, and there's another one in there and I don't remember what it was. We don't eat a lot of pie, but I thought it would be nice to have some of these, you know, just throw one together in the winter. So these are our potatoes that we have. Um, they just didn't do really good this year. They're just kind of weird shaped, scrawny. Usually we have about five of these cases. This year I think we got like 80 pounds total. Not a lot at all. And these will be fine too until we come back. And then I keep duck eggs on hand. I don't wash these. If you wash your eggs, it takes the bloom, like the protective covering off and they go um, bad quicker. And so these are ones that we just picked up um, from the pen and just put them in this basket here to eat. So I also have eggs that I did um, water glassing with and basically you just take your clean unwashed eggs, they can't be dirty or anything, and you put them into a lime water and that protects the egg. When you want to use it, you just take it out, wash it off. So this is what it looks like when I just took the lid off. This is what it looks like. This is not froze. You just pull this stuff off, wash it around. Um, these are the eggs. They are still good. We've tried them. They're good. What you want to do though, when you water glass eggs is when you get ready to use them, you want to try to dig to the bottom to get the oldest eggs first. These are a bunch of extra peppers we have. We keep that here. Hmm. This is tamarind. This is really good. I don't know if I can tell you where I got that from. So we have some and it's fabulous. And then we have onions. My onions, I planted like 700 onions and they just really did not do anything. Um, this is pretty much the size of all the onions. They were really not worth my time. All right, so freezer. We had an awesome year with hunting this year. We ended up getting elk, two deer, I think like four turkeys. And then of course we raised pigs. And so we have three pigs in here too, I think. We do have a lot of a sausage that we made this year. We did Italian sausage, we did hot sausage, breakfast sausage, deer sausage. And then we have a few vegetables in here. I really like this freezer, but it's really hard to organize a deep freezer. Everything's just crammed in here. And what we usually do is eat from the top down. But we do have, I had a lot of celery this year, so I froze celery and then, um, some of our peppers that we grew. Peppers are one thing that did amazing here this year. We had a bumper crop of peppers. And so we have a lot of bags of poppers. It's really nice to do these like this because all you have to do is let these defrost and then just pop them on the grill. When I say we had a bumper crop of peppers, like we had a bumper crop of peppers. I mean, I'll show you some of the freeze dried ones. We ended up having like 200, 250 pounds of just peppers. I mean, tons of peppers. And then we did lots of um, garlic scape pesto. It's really good. Um, I did not do a video, but I'll have to do a video on that next year. So garlic scape is the really curly cue that's on top of your garlic stock. Stock. They usually get that little curly cue right before your garlic is ready. And you can just go and just snip those off. They're better when you get them small and they're tender, but um, they're really good. I mean, you can just saute them and with, you know, peppers and stuff and just eat them just like that. Or you can make pesto like I did. Then we have the odd things. Rattlesnake skin. <laughs> No telling what you, I think there is a hide in here somewhere too. So, um, and then we still have a lot of fat from our pigs. We're just saving this to make sausage uh, next year. And then this is our little cabin here. This is our guest house. If you come to stay with us, this is where you stay. Um, so this is where I keep our freeze dryer, our dehydrator. We have jalapenos and banana peppers. Um, we have celery. We have celery up here. There's more peppers. There's, uh, I think that is Swiss chard. It is labeled, I just don't remember what it is. I think it's Swiss chard. So this has been my first year with the freeze dryer. Um, I'm still undecided whether I really like it or not. I mean, it is convenient to have this kind of stuff. It's a great way to put things up to have. It's great for backpacking meals for things like that, but it takes a long time to do one batch. I mean, you're looking at a good 48 hours to do a batch of peppers or something like that. And it uses a lot of electricity. We've noticed our power bill has gone up like by like 50 bucks a month. So it's, um, it's kind of expensive to use.
So I know we have a scene change for the end of this video. I did my whole spill back in Idaho and then I realized that it was so cold that last day that we were there. It had drained my camera battery and I did not realize it and didn't get any of the video ending. So we have a scene change. We are at our winter home in Florida. I've been wanting to do the pantry video for a long time, but I kept thinking, oh, I need to clean it up. I need to get everything in order. But Honestly, it's never in order. It is a working pantry. We're in there every single day. We have very, very little room in our house, so I keep everything in that little building. And so we're constantly in there. The kids are in there. They're getting stuff. Things are getting moved around. And then it is small. Things are stacked up on the floor, but that is real life. That's how it's always gonna be. I will never have one of those nice, beautiful pantries that you see everybody advertising and making videos on. It's just not gonna happen. So for us, this year was an extremely tough gardening year. I have been gardening for 20 plus years and I have never had a year as challenging as this year was. The whole Northwest had really big issues, you know, from our weather to all the rain we had. It was just a very odd and difficult gardening year. And I had a lot of problems this year. I did not get near the amount of stuff that I normally get. Now you'll find from this pantry tour video, there are some items I did not mention in here that I had made a video at the beginning of our season saying I was gonna grow okra, sweet potatoes, and um, the pink eye purple hull peas were there all three southern crops that um, it was experimental for me this year and I didn't mention anything about it. One, we just didn't really get enough of it. Um, so we'll start with the, the, the peas. The peas took up a lot of room and our season was just not long enough still to get the amount that we needed for my crew to eat. I think we got two meals total out of all of it. It took a long time to go and shell all those peas just for two meals. I don't really know if that is an item I will do again. Um, I don't know, It's just have to, we'll just have to see. You know, I had plenty of garden space, but it was a lot of work and I had a hard time making myself sit still to shell all those peas. Now, as you know, sweet potatoes, I grew in a low tunnel. The vines did absolutely fabulous, huge, huge vines. And we did get potatoes, but we did get sweet potatoes, but really not enough. Um, two of the varieties didn't make at all. And then uh, two varieties did. So we probably would have got more if I would have done just one variety. Um, I think total we ended up getting like 15 pounds of potatoes, which is not anything at all. Usually when I do an experimental crop, I say a two year rotation, you know, I'm gonna try it for two years before I say I'm not gonna do it again. So I probably will grow those again to see how they do, but only grow the one that did the best and just see how they, you know, they do next year. There was not any in the pantry tour because they didn't last. They were all really small and skinny and they tasted good. The first, we did get two meals out of them um, before they went bad, but they just went bad. They got soft and moldy super quick and so they ended up all being fed to the pigs. And so I could have used that space for something else, but I will grow them one more year just to, you know, make sure it just wasn't a fluke year. Like I said, it was an extremely hard gardening season this year. And so I will try those again. And then my third crop that I had tried that was a Southern crop that I did not mention was okra. Okra is my absolute favorite vegetable. Um, I will grow that again. We did get okra. We got, I think three mils is it. But right when it started to do really, really well, we left for a month to go to elk camp. And so that didn't get picked for a month. And okra is one of those things to keep it producing. You have to keep make, you have to keep cutting it. Like you need to cut it every day. And we were gone for a month, so it just stopped making. Um, it grew really well, it produced really well. And I think that if we had been there for me to keep cutting it so it would make more, then we had, would have got a really good crop out of that. So that is one thing that I will grow next year. Um, I did not show it into the video because it's buried in that freezer somewhere along with the peas. Um, we'll eventually get to it. It's there. So that is one of the things about gardening. It is always a learning experience. It's never the same. Year after year, you're constantly looking at, you know, what grew best, what do you like, what do you didn't like. And that's one of the great things about gardening. You know, you have a fresh slate every single year to start over and keep going. 
There's a couple questions that I get asked very regularly and I'm gonna go ahead and answer those on this video now. One of those questions is when we come to Florida for the winter, do we have someone stay at our house? Yes, we do. We have a friend that comes and stays at our place while we're gone. He takes care of things, you know, make sure freezers are working, make sure new water doesn't freeze, and then also takes care of our animals. We still have seven pigs up there and ducks and a cat. And so he comes and then stays there and takes care of all that stuff for us. That's a huge relief for us. We don't have to worry about just leaving our place. Second question we get a lot is, you know, we work so hard and we have all this food put away. Do we bring that food to Florida with us? No. The answer to that is no, we do not bring anything with us to Florida. When we come to Florida, we drive um, my Subaru across the country, you know, with the four of us in there and the dog and our camera equipment. That's the only things we bring here. And so we don't really bring anything with us. We wouldn't have the room and we don't really want to, you know, haul a trailer across country. When we're in Florida, we hunt, um, we forage for foods. You know, back here in these woods behind me, there are a lot of oyster mushrooms that I'm getting ready to go check to see if those are ready. We do have like a small garden here for growing greens and stuff like that. Um, you can grow greens, broccoli, cauliflower, stuff like that um, around down here year round. And so we'll do some small things like that. Other than that, you know, we do go to the grocery store. Um, you know, we fish. Um, the local farmers market and then of course the local um, seafood market you know we always hit that up pretty frequently while we're here because you know fresh fresh seafood you can't beat it and so we eat a lot of it while we're here so I hope you enjoyed it I look forward to giving you a lot more videos here while we are in Florida I took a ton of footage this past year of things that I was doing things that you saw in the video the hot sauces and the pie fillings and stuff like that I will be putting all those together through the winter while I'm down here, so those will be ready to go. But look forward to a lot more videos of Florida foraging, cooking down here, just our adventures and everyday life. We have a lot of adventures planned while we're down here. I cannot wait to go on some of them. I can't wait to show you some of the things that we are doing down here. I hope everyone had a very Merry Christmas and a great New Year. I know that we did. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you on the next one.